Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, I'm Josh. I've been emailing with you. It's very nice to meet you. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just uh, just kind of as way of introduction here, this is the first week of our spring quarter here at Seattle Pacific University. Cool. Um, and this is our sociology of deviance course. It's a course that explores the sociology of how things come to be defined as normal or normative, how groups become defined as deviant or, or how they're treated as deviant um, and, and how they manage those sort of things. So it's, it's very broad sort of um, topic to do a class on. Um, but I got excited um, when I learned that you are from Whidbey Island, correct? Ah. Yeah, yeah. I'm from, I was born and raised in the Northwest, went to Washington State, drank my first year through there, and then went on to Western up in- Oh, the cool. Excellent. But what did you end up studying? Uh, <sighs> I'm older kids. So back then you didn't really study anything. I mean, we paid for uh, our tuition with couch cushion money. It was cheap. It was didn't. I mean, yeah, I studied general business. Basically, I was one of the first kids at Western that actually had his own computer at home. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was an Apple II GS. Most of the time we had to go to a computer lab. And use you know use word processing machines and uh, so yeah that's that's what I studied and got um, thrown out my junior year for manufacturing explosives on campus. Oh, okay, true, true story. But not it's not what you think. It's not like I was a Ted Kaczynski type thing. I was making fireworks uh, for all the reservations that are around here, uh, notably oh, okay. notably Puyallup and Tulalip. Sounds lucrative, I think. It right? was lucrative. That's why I did it. It was very lucrative. I didn't even know. They were the ones that talked me into it. They were the ones that was like, yeah, you know, you know, instead of trading us, because I was manufacturing some of this stuff anyway for my own fireworks shows. And I said, well, they said, you know, we'll pay you cash for this stuff. And I go, what? <laughs> like, I can make money. So I recruited a whole bunch of people. We had at Western, I want to turn this into a whole separate thing. I think I had 32 people working for me up on, up on Western. Yeah, it was, it was not, wow. a good, it was not a good thing. So <laughs> don't learn from my mistakes. Don't. I don't know. I, I, I think it probably, I have some students here scribbling down like, you know, into this. <laughs> like, well, no, no, no. Doors were closing summer. behind me. I was getting away with stuff mostly because of permit issues, sure. uh, chemicals and stuff that, that I was using are now considered controlled substances. So I was one of the last people that I could actually do that. But man, it was fun. <laughs> fun to do it. Fun. Yeah. I'm, kind of, I'm a bit of a pyro. So uh, anyway, <laughs> let's let's get on with it. It's like, okay, yeah. so he is totally a deviant. So please, by all means, ask questions. We are, I mean, we are broadly interested in social deviance. So so whatever you, whatever you want to talk about. Oh, yeah, I'll uh, throw them at you. I, my life was not normal by really any stretch. Okay. Every everything that I did for whatever reason was off the beaten path. I didn't try to do it. It just happened. It was just, you know, if you believe in some people's destinies or to do certain things, it's like mm -hmm. it just was one of those weird my path was was always always different. Anyway, sure. go ahead. Yeah, no. And we'll, I I we will definitely hear about that. So I just wanted to introduce you a little bit more here. Um so we did watch the Netflix documentary on Tuesday. We read the, the skeptic article that you recommended. Um, I think you emailed it to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, but just a, a little bit more information um, about Mark for the class. Um, various sources that I've, I've read have uh, dubbed you the king or mayor of flat earth subculture. Um, is there a yeah. title you prefer? Um, no, I mean, I've been called a lot of things. I, I, I generally don't go into the whole king or mayor or prince or whatever. I usually okay. call myself the flat earth recruiter more okay. than anything because I am usually, my content is the stuff you run into first. Yes. If, if you get into the topic. Uh, you, I mean, there's, lot, there's tons of people that are making content, but mine is the 101 book. My, yeah, mine is are... the one in universities you hear about. It's like, oh, yeah, I was really into Mark Sargent for a while, but now I'm into Eric Dubay or now I'm into this. It's like I'm, I'm past tense for a lot, of, a lot of the people in my community, which is fine. I, but, but I still get a lot of letters saying, oh, yeah, you ruined my life. And it's like fantastic. So, yeah, you're, but so you're like the, you're very much kind of the front facing 
Yes, um, I am the yeah. one they usually put in front of uh, the media. I've done, in fact, it's weird. I have done, oh, I don't even know. I think an interview, more than an interview a week for the last six years. Wow. wow. For okay. everything from little podcasts to international TV shows to you name it. I, yeah, I'm usually the guy. And I was not the guy that wanted to do this. I, I, there were two people I absolutely wanted to be in front. Uh, one was Matt Boylan from the, uh, from the documentary. Another one was a guy named uh, Eric uh, out of Thailand. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, again, for whatever reason, ended up being me, mostly because the media is lazy. Uh, they, th what happened was I started doing a few interviews and what the media does, producers do, because they're the ones, they're really the power behind the scenes is they mm -hmm. look up, they just do research and they say, oh, flat earth interview. They look to see who's done an interview. They'll listen to you for like five minutes. Like, yeah, he's fine. Let's get him. He looks like, that's yeah, it. Sure. Is like how, how Bill Nye gets all his interviews. It's like, he's, he doesn't even have a master's in anything. And it's like, he just gets put on all these things. It's like, oh yeah, he looks like he could be a scientist in any field. Let's just put him in there. It's like, okay, whatever. Uh, I, I don't think you should necessarily sh sell yourself short here because uh, I looked at your YouTube channel uh, this morning to make sure I had the up-to-date numbers. You have almost 93,000 subscribers to your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm, not even, uh, I'm not even in the top 10. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you're just shy of 19 million views on your videos. Um, you yeah. know, that you, and, and you have a big reach. Unfortunately, that's not even most of I've got way more than that, but they're not on my channels. That's how, how they didn't talk about this documentary. I got popular because I put I was one of those guys because I didn't care about mon I didn't even monetize the channel for the first six months. I put Creative Commons license. If you guys know anything about licensing, that means that anyone could grab it and put it on their channel and, and get the nickels for it. And uh, I had people coming back to me saying, oh, yeah, I loved your your movie. Your, you know, your two hour movie. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, great. I didn't make a two hour movie. I just kept made these little segments. And then finally I asked, it's like, where are you watching this? And people started sending me links from other channels. They were getting millions of hits per, uh, I think one of the highest ones is like four and a half million for wow. thing is like, wow, that's incredible. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> I never, there's people that scour YouTube for creative commons license things just so they can get the hits. And so it's like, great, wonderful. But yes, thank you. I, I do try to I do try to be a little self-deprecating and and humble because I don't ever want to get caught in that trap. Yeah, you know, it's like because people will say, "Oh, you're doing it for the media publicity. You're doing it for the money." It's like, yeah, you know, the, the women, the drugs, the lifestyle. It's sure. it's it's all <laughs> no, it doesn't exist. I mean, that's the same reason that I became a sociology professor. You know, it's it's all glamour. Right? Oh yeah, it is. It's all glamour. Yeah, people get. Why would I get accused of it all the time? It's like, why would of all the topics I would pick, why would I pick flat earth? The most polarizing thing ever where, you know, I get, I get, I don't get really hate mail, but the comment section is brutal. I don't read the comments. Yeah. If I did, I'd be curled up in a fetal position, you know, with a bottle somewhere. It's like, oh God, make it stop. And we've had people like Patricia in the movie. She finally oh. caved. Uh, uh, the movie did it uh, after within a year, not even a year after the movie came out, she, the trolls were coming at her so hard that, uh, and they found out her, her real address eventually, that uh, she, just, she just walked away from it and said, look, I can't. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that. Eh, it, it, look, it's the nature of the game. Uh, the, the, you, you've heard the saying, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't believe that anymore. The saying is, if you can't say something nice, you're probably in the YouTube forums. Yeah, because sure. that's totally. what it is. People just go in there and wind up. There are trolls that want to make people cry every single day, and they can. I mean, it is oh. low hanging fruit out there. So, I my recommendation for anybody starting up a YouTube tube channel is first off, don't read the comments. You know, like your life depended on it. Sure. Uh, people, yeah. It's it's not it's not worth it. Let people fight it out inside the comment section. Uh, I mean, come on, I could make. I'm not exaggerating. I could make a video about puppies and kittens playing in a children's cancer ward, right? And within 200 hits, you're going to have somebody in there. It's like unsubbed. <laughs> I hate you and everything about you and your God. Thumb, you know, thumbs down, you know, whatever. And it's, yeah. who the heck are you? It's like, just, they're just full of hateful people. Anyway, well, this, this social media angle really interests me. And I, I want to give the students a chance to ask the questions too here in a sec. Um, but uh, let, let me ask this question here. Yeah, um, yeah. 
I mean, you, you were mentioning here, like the kind of pernicious effects of social media and some of its more toxic elements. Um, what, but kind of big picture, what is your take on what social media has done for the flat earth movement? We exist because of social media, plain and simple. Uh, it's, it's not, it's not an exaggeration in the slightest. Uh, YouTube is the biggest television network in the world. I really wish they could advertise themselves as this, but they can't, you know, what, what was the stats? Not even f just a few years ago it was like every minute there's 80 hours of content being, wow. being uploaded to YouTube. It's this lifetimes worth of content on YouTube. And so they're looking like anything, they're looking to promote binge worthy topics. And here's a great example. There was this programmer that came out of Google who owns YouTube. And he, they asked him why things get recommended to you on the, on the right-hand side, you know, recommended for you, tractor maintenance, what, whatever, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. And he go out of all the topics, you know, there's tens of thousands of topics on YouTube. He mentions one and he goes, he goes, well, he goes, if the average person that first gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? And it was true. We, it was obscene how much we were getting recommended. I mean, three years straight, just, just, sure. just saturating the market. And then eventually Congress or the Senate got involved and, and because they were trying to you know, crack down on you know, fake news. And uh, so we, you know, we were recommended less. We weren't banned, but we were, you know, they took their, they didn't hit the brakes. They just took the foot off the, uh, off the gas. So yes, social media in all its forms, mainly YouTube. Uh, but we were, yeah, without that, we wouldn't, I mean, that's how we caught fire. That's how everything had the documentary, uh, the books, the, uh, you know, commercial i did in australia all that stuff i mean none of it would have happened without without youtube and i'm a little surprised there hasn't been a huge competitor that's walked in to try to challenge youtube you know building servers i mean you got the model it, it'd be easy enough to do maybe it's the same reason why there's no been no real huge competitor to like ebay yeah right you know, <laughs> I just they're in there it's like ah, we're not gonna be able to compete but anyway but but now youtube's has been censoring a lot of stuff recently they've been kind of changing the rules over the last few years so mm -hmm. we've been you know our monetization when the um the ad apocalypse happened when 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 the government got involved and said that they were you know you guys should recommend youtube less and they did uh our monetization dropped 60 percent, 70 percent across the board oh. and which is you know that's that's the way it goes and, and people say oh you know they're censoring it's like no come on man they were we, we were the princes of YouTube for a while, so I'm not going to complain. And yet, I, even I got a community guideline strike recently, but that was for a whole other thing. Gotcha. Cool. 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 Um, and I mean, I have this. There's, there's, the students have questions, so I want to. Sure yeah. I whatever. Like, and I, by the oh, way, I, I only see. Here. I only see the four of them. I, I, as an admin, I allowed somebody else in. I don't know if she's in the list. Uh, I see Lucy, Samantha, Jose, and. Jade, yeah, forgive me, I'm older, my eyes aren't great, and my monitor's huge. Yeah, I know there's a there's a gallery view you can turn around that'll let you kind of see more people, but um, yeah, if so, if, if one of you would like to ask a question, you know, raise your hand or, or wave the, the Zoom hand, we'll, we'll make sure, yeah, we get to questions here. All right, who wants, you, you, well, you pick, right? You pick who, who asks? <laughs> I guess, yeah, oh, I see one hand, oh gosh. No. Ask anything you want, by the way. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, I've done yeah. enough of these. You can ask personal questions or, or silly things like what my favorite milkshake flavor is, which is chocolate. Everything else is weak. <laughs> All um, right. Um, well, first, thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, and first question I wanted to ask is how did you first discover the earth was flat? Ah, a good, good startup question. Uh, I first got into it back in 2014, uh, kind of like the documentary said, which I, I looked in, I'm old enough that I'd looked in just about every conspiracy there was and had, a, had an opinion on any conspiracy you can think of, most of which you cannot talk about in this class. And I got bored with, uh, with, with everything. And it was kind of like on my bucket list. It was like, oh, I'm in my forties and you know, what, what can I look at? Why not? And I was looking, it's like, oh, well, and I initially got into it through hollow earth of, of all things that, that there's actually subterranean civilizations that are down below us somewhere. And through that, I looked at a military guy from the United States Navy, Admiral Byrd, which I don't even know if they talked about in the documentary. And 
that got me going to Antarctica and then the connection between Antarctica and then started looking all around and, and hammered on that for, I, I mean, seriously, a good nine months before I finally, I gave up fighting it. It's like, okay, can I prove the, the globe in a court of law? Everybody thinks they can, including me. And nobody, nobody likes flat earth to start with, which is by the way, I preface to the class. If you like your life the way it is, do not look into this. And this is not reverse psychology. Don't do it because it'll, because once you get to a certain point, you can't come back from it. You can't unsee it. Once you, once you see it, you can't unring the bell. So in the beginning of 2015, I made a series of videos and it was really kind of a cry for help more than anything. It's like, okay, the, I, everyone knows that the individuals, eh, we've all got our specialties, but the internet hive mind is very intelligent. We don't miss anything, nothing, you know, as a hive mind, somebody, it all takes us one person in his underwear at three in the morning in Nebraska. It's like, oh, wow. Did you notice this? Like, oh my God, this guy may have never done a thing in his life ever. He works at a gas station. <laughs> Right. He wears, you know, something with his name on, you know, sewn in and he came up with this. So I initially gave up uh, at the beginning of 2015 and said, uh, OK, I can't prove it anymore. Here's why I think, you know, we are living in a box. And the short version for you guys that wasn't really in the, um, uh, the documentary, which was we're living in, in basically a, a big building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And it was so big and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960. And I put that out there. I go, tell me where I'm wrong. And, you know, convince me, shoot me down. And I was hoping that some academics could. And I was really, I was just waiting for somebody with a master's degree and something to, to call me up and say, okay, here's where you went wrong. Or you forgot to carry the two. And that was it. And it was the opposite. It was just this weird slow motion explosion of stuff where I had subject matter experts calling me and just general people calling me and media calling me. And here we are six years later. Yeah, it's weird. So okay. that's how I got into it. I don't know if you've seen the new King Kong versus Godzilla yet. Um, I just watched it last night. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hollow yeah, earth yeah, the whole, they have the whole earth thing. It's got really, really but it's round. Yeah. It's, the earth is round in the movie. Um, yeah. It was, <laughs> uh, yeah, is, is hollow, is there a crossover between hollow earth and, and flat earth kind of culture, subcultures? Or? Just about everything dovetails into flat earth, which is nice. Okay. Uh, we've had very few conflicts with any conspiracies, including hollow earth. And I was a big hollow earth fan, big, big uh, hollow earth fan. Uh, whereas the, the formal hollow earth is that it's a globe. And when you get to a certain depth, the whole thing is, is hollowed out on the inside. And that's where everybody lives. But in the flat earth model, we realized as we were looking into this, I mean, we've had to revisit science and relearn so many science things that we forgot about in, in high school and college, uh, that uh, you don't need that much of a, an area to, to sustain a civilization. You realize that most of 95% of the people in our civilization live between sea level and 5,000 feet, one, one mile up. And that's it. I mean, that that's nothing. So if you created a subterranean cave, as it were, uh, or a structure that was only, I don't know, I mean, remember, civilian airlines cap out at about 10 miles. Spy planes, if you believe them, cap out at 20 miles. That's not much. You know, 50, 50 mile high structure, that's that's all you'd really need. And then you then you have to ask, it's like, well, are we in a hollow earth? Which has been discussed in a whole bunch of sci-fi sci books. So there you go. That's that's so hollow. Everything else, there's only one conspiracy that does not do because every other conspiracy is under the umbrella of flat Earth, which was really bad because there was a whole bunch of conspiracy people that came. And it's like no, no, no. This is the top of the food chain. It's like yeah, that's just. And again, I'm not going to say it here. That's just this and this and this. This is these are just small things by comparison. This is the whole world, and the only one that didn't dovetail in was um, the the uh, the secret space program which is a whole nother conspiracy that there was a side, there was the public space program and the secret space program and the secret space program supposedly had a couple million people on the moon already and half a million people on Mars and, and all this. And that just collapsed once, once we came along, it's like, yeah, no, 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 ain't going to happen. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Did, you, did you have any uh, uh, follow-up questions, Karamia? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, 
Uh, would you say our earth would look like Asgard? That is a wonderful question, and I hate it <laughs> because I tell people it's like, hey, great, so you're a superhero fan. Uh, and I am too. I've got uh, Justice League stuff all over here. By the way, watch the Snyder Cut. Four hours. Yeah, totally worth it in my opinion. No, I'm not kidding. It totally was. Totally was I agree. Worth it. I thought it was. I thought it actually. It's like, it oh, great. thank, yeah. thank God. It's like because the first one didn't make any sense, and once you heard the backstory, it's like, oh, I get it. So Zach, and it, by, by the way, that could have only happened during this whole lockdown thing, because you you never you will never be able to. I think the longest movie I ever saw in the theater was three and a half hours, and that was Gettysburg, and there was an actual intermission in the theater after two hours. Anyway. Uh, no, Asgard, for those of you who don't know superheroes, that is the uh, Norse realm of the gods, which is basically a flying asteroid, the, the, you know, the flying pancake with cosmic waterfalls and all that stuff. No, Thor did us no favors whatsoever because I get the cosmic waterfall. It's like, why isn't the water run off? It's like, it's because it's not Thor. That's why. Okay. What we're saying is, is that we are in a building but where that building is, we have no idea. It could be sitting on a desk in a lab somewhere. Uh, what we're saying is there is no space. Space is literally just lights in a ceiling. It is no different than a, and they glossed over it in the documentary, uh, a planetarium. So when you go to a planetarium and you see lights on the ceiling, you know, like you see, you go to plan. I know I'm older. You guys don't go to planetariums. It's like, we used to do that for fun back in the day, believe it or not. So people, other people did drugs in a planetarium. I never did. So... You look up in the ceiling and you see Jupiter, right? It's like, wow, that's spherical. That looks, looks realistic. Yeah. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just a projection on the ceiling. And yet, who's to say when you don't walk out of that building, you're just not in a much, much bigger building. So everything we consider as space is just a giant ornate clock system. And you know, it's, it's just part of it. And you think, oh, that's too simplistic. It's like, really? Take a person from 200 years ago and put them in that same planetarium. It doesn't have to even be a caveman, but you know, just a couple hundred years ago and put them in that same planetarium and show them. It'll blow their mind. It's like, oh, why is the moon up there? It's the middle of the day. It's like, because it's not real. It's an illusion. Simula and we, you know, our goal in the entertainment industry, which I worked in for a number of years, uh, is to create the perfect simulation, which you guys have seen. You know, w they would love to create the Matrix. Love, love, love. They they know full well though. If they create the Matrix, you know, there's going to be a big problem. Um, the the creator of Dilbert, the comic strip. I got to mention this really fast. He was the first person to say, and he said this in the 80s, because this is when Star Trek Next Gen was out and about the whole holodeck. He goes, "The last invention we will ever make." is the holodeck and then society will collapse because that's all anyone will care about. Everybody cares about escapism and nobody's, you know, unless you really think you wake up and think your life is awesome. Everything is awesome. Thumbs up. You know, everyone would jump to the simulation. And so it's kind of this dicey thing. We're, you know, we're rushing at breakneck speed to try to do it. But if we do it, eh, which is also a whole nother thing, you know, could this world be a, a simulation? Absolutely. It could. I mean, there's, there's science experiments out there that just scream that we're in a simulation. The double slit f experiment for starters, followed by um, neuroscience versus free will. You can wiki both of those. Uh, anyway, sorry, I ramble. What else you got? Can I get a, just a, a clarifying question too? Yeah. Um, and then Amber will, will have... Go ahead Amber McGraw, question. raised hand. Good. Yeah. Um, so when you say like uh, that we're like in a building of some, or some kind like at the there we're kind of in under a structure is uh is that like uh like a, a feature of just like the world as it is like because uh um it seems like a lot of flat earthers come to it from this religious angle um uh, and some of them some of them come from it like this is how the Bible seems to say God created the world. And so right, like, this right, is right. why it's like that. It's, it, right? well, it kind of works. It works out well in that capacity. And well, heck, let's go over demographics really quick because that's part of what sociology is all about. Mm -hmm. Demographics and the stats, trying to connect the dots on why thing, people do things and when, who falls into what category. Um, half of our members are hardcore Christians, at least half, half of them. Um, but the other half are not. So we get these weird, we get these, weird, sometimes we have conferences that are, that are very pro-Christian and sometimes like the Raleigh conference, which you saw in the documentary caught criticism because half the people wanted to want religion out of it. 
and the other half wanted more religion. So, but but that leads to the thing. It's like, okay, who built this? Right, it's going to be one of your questions. Who who built it and why? And it can only come down to one of two answers. You know, if you believe that it was built, uh, that is an older civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves, or some sort of deity. The thing is, when you when you try to compare those two, you're kind of splitting hairs, because one man's advanced technological society is another man's deity. I mean, come on, if a golden spaceship landed in Paris tomorrow and people walked out, you'd have two groups of people that would look at this. The first group would be, oh, wow, they do look like the people from Avatar, right? It's like, ah, I told you, you owe me 10 bucks. You know, the, all the geeks would, would be like, oh, wow, you know, and they want to know more about this sciency based group from the golden ship. The other group would be like, we must worship the blue people, start building churches immediately. And they would. I mean, this this would this is what would happen. And of course, you'd have this third fringe group, which would be like, "This is not what God is. <laughs> we must destroy them." Oh, uh, it'd be really, it really uh, complicated, as it were. So, but yeah, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, a, a structure that had nothing to do with us. We had no. The, the line from Contact, and I know it's an old movie. I'm a big pop culture reference person, but the line from Contact, which is so relevant, which is when they asked the aliens, when she asked the aliens, you know, who built the the highway system, they were very humble about it. They said, no, "We don't know who built it. You know, <laughs> we didn't build it. We don't know who did." And that was very, very telling. Which is in this sort. So, so we didn't build this place. But we also don't know who did. We're kind of waiting for that. You know, it's like, okay, which is part of my 100th monkey effect. You can look that up too. Uh, goal, which is when enough people, I think I've, my, my bet is that if enough people figure this out, figure out, you know, what the world is and what the world isn't, then it'll trigger something, you know, software threshold, where all of a sudden it's like, all right, well, there's too many people that know. Might as well show them what it's really all about. But you know that that's my my glass half full happy ending. Great, thank you, uh, Amber. Amber and the cat. Oh, cat yeah, went away. I like to step on my computer. Um, I was just wondering for the people who built. I don't know if you'd want to call it like the building the simulation. Does it like I don't know worry you or kind of freak you out to think they're watching? Because, I mean, that that thought seems like the Truman Show. I'm sure you've got a lot of comments about the Truman uh, Show. Yeah, yeah, the Truman Show. I don't know, is it like a, do you believe it's a study or are they really watching or kind of like, oh, they built they build it. Let's see what they do. <laughs> it's a, No, it's a good it's a good question. And it, which leads into the why. Why build it? And for, I, there's two there's two answers for me there which is one is you have to define what this place really is. Uh, there's only three reasons you would build a place like this. Um, one would be entertainment, which would be interesting because, okay, well, if it's entertainment, it can't necessarily be for the people down on the ground because there's a lot of people that aren't really having that much fun. Let's, let's call it what it is. Um, confinement, like a prison. It's like, yeah, it's a pretty nice prison though. I mean, it's very well appointed. It's you know, can't couldn't really ask for any more when it comes to prison. Plus, you can go anywhere you want. Uh, or it, what I kind of go into, it's kind of a hybrid. Uh, first, I think it's I do think it's a school. I think we're here to learn something, which kind of ties into your whole classroom thing. I, I do think we're here for a reason. Uh, that we're here to learn a new perspective and and learn about some stuff. Now, from the people on the outside, if, let's go to a bigger thing. If you want your mind blowing a little bit on a morning. Uh, which is, I believe that from a higher level outside of here, I think the universe runs on novelty, which is that uh, we, it's something we ask all the time. We're, we're walking up to each other. What's new? What's happening? You know, but mainly what's new? We hate being bored. We hate it. We hate it so much. You know, we, 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 you know, we're running out of TV shows to watch, for example. And I've watched a lot of TV shows and I'm still running out of stuff to watch. Um, so this world would be an interesting place to create novelty, uh, through creative angst, which is what we, what we seem to have done. I mean, we've created a lot of things, but our best creative processes seem to be out of, I hate to use the word too liberally here, but suffering, uh, which is think of the greatest artists in the world. What do they all have in common? They all have tragic backstories. <laughs> You know, they or they have come from societies that were, you know, areas that were built on war, all this stuff. And so I think from the outside, you know, novelty is the the king of the universe, which, you know, it's how, how things run. How's that for answer? Okay, good.
What was your cat's name, by the way? I always hate telling this because <laughs> they're uh, old cats from when my sister and I were really little. So we have two. Yeah. My cat's name is Iffy. I named her Iffy when I was six. Like I-F-F-Y. And my Why is sister that terrible? Miss Pilot. Because she liked the name Pilot, but she thought it was too masculine. No, well, I know. That's why I asked. No, people, people pick the best names for cats. Dogs, <laughs> it's always the same. <laughs> you know, Sparky, <laughs> Patches, Rover. That's whatever. true, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Emily, I think you've had your hand up for a bit. Hi, Emily. Hi, Mark. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, my question is, what is at risk or what are the stakes for people who continue to believe that the earth is round? No risk. Uh, again, it's the, the, the earth being round. We don't even use the word round, by the way. We use the, the word uh, globe, sphere, or ball. Because round technically can apply to a dinner plate to your dining room table or, or whatever. Technicality. Um, but it's been working for the least, at least the last five centuries. So is, is there something wrong with thinking, you know, is it going to hurt you if you think in the about the globe? No, no, not necessarily. Uh, look, uh, it, and I'm not trying to pick you guys. You, sociology is all about demographics. Uh, conformity builds empires. We wouldn't even be talking right now if, uh, if, if everyone didn't kind of believe in the same thing, the, and, and your teacher will probably, did I say teacher or professor in your case? Oh, either one. It's All right, we'll say professor, uh, which is, I'm not going to call you your first name. I don't want them to be like. <laughs> <laughs> you can but, call me fine. But, but your professor will probably tell you that people like me and, and will always exist in the world of statistics. You know, there's always going to be a percentage of people that think like I do. So the the norm out there is that everything is what you what it appears to be there are no lies in the world everything is is wonderful and the, you know in business and politics and sports and entertainment and journalism and science there's there's nothing nothing sinister no deceptions going on whatsoever and everything on the media is completely uh neutral and unbiased and objective it's great wonderful won't hurt you 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 want to think down those lines fantastic great uh, you know you'll sleep well you probably sleep better than me uh, but there's a, a group of people out there, like me, that, uh, that question the narrative. I'm, I'm a big believer in good writing. So I, I, will, I will get disinterested in a movie very quickly if the plot holes, you know, if something doesn't match up. And that when you start looking through history, though, there shouldn't be a lot of plot holes in history. And that's where we start looking at stuff. It's like, wait a minute, why? Most people just gloss over it. It's like, well, it's probably fine. You know, we're, we're lucky when we get out of high school, especially in the United States, we learn anything about chemistry or physics or biology or any of that kind of stuff. And so we just start, we start asking questions. We don't go along. We, we, there's an old saying, which is uh, trust everyone, but count your change. And so we question the narrative. So, sorry, long, it was a long way to answer your, your question. Is there any, is it going to hurt you to believe in the globe? Nope. You've been doing fine so far, which is why I tell people, it's like, you want to look into this, that's fine. You may feel more enriched. It's what you have to gain. To, if you, if you, a lot of people like knowing the backstory uh, on things. That's why we, we love seeing the making of this or the real, you know, there's all sorts of shows. The real story behind blah, blah, blah. There's, enough, there's an old, old saying, which is nothing is, is ever uh, what it appears to truly be at, at first glance, or there's variations of that, which is when you look at something, it's like, you know, you see it, it's like, it appears to be something, but really most of the time it's not. There's always something else that's going on. And, you know, if you like peeling back the layers and looking at stuff, there's all sorts of fun rabbit holes to go down. So there you go. Long, long winded answer. So as a, I think a follow-up for to Emily's question, uh, say like tomorrow, the, the, the demographics just swap and like most people in the world believe the earth is flat. Right. And it's a smaller proportion that believe it's a globe. Um, oh, you want to know what happens then? Would there be any benefit? Would like society be better? Would there be any benefits? Well, uh, something like that? okay. So no, <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, the reason why this thing, you gotta remember if in, in our story the uh we even even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960 and that would be the united states and the soviet union um, mostly in antarctica figuring it out so the question is will in I, I, whatever secret society let's call it a secret society if you want to say the illuminati or the bilderbergs or the rothschilds or the cfr there's so many freaking 
groups out there. Uh, they, they have a meeting and it's like, okay, do we tell people? Well, what's the worst that could happen? And it's like, oh, then somebody steps up and they say, well, let's see. First off, here's what, here's what could happen. Uh, it's again, it's not what they stand to gain. It's what they stand to lose, which is academics. Let's use your, your world, right? Uh, astronomy and astrophysics would be closed for a long time. That's just those groups. And then the remaining sciences, geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, anything with anology would have to be rebuilt from the ground. Libraries would have to be emptied and re, you know, books that have to be a, a wonderful thing for people that write textbooks because you have to write a whole new series of textbooks. That's just academics. The academic world would be turned upside down. Uh, economically, all the world markets would have to be closed for months because you wouldn't know how if they're twitchy as it is. This would be, no one, people would be panicking. They'd be, they'd be huge swings. The volatility index in, in the world markets would be off the charts. Uh, but the big thing, um, would be the spirituality side of it, which is you're talking about the main five religious houses of the world, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. You're giving them leverage against science simultaneously. And each of these groups has at least a billion people. And it would be, and you're telling them, by the way, to show restraint <laughs> against science that has been beating them over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries. Yeah, it'd be, oh, it'd be awful. Um, they, they wouldn't, because they wouldn't stop. They'd say, okay, so you were wrong about something kind of important. Uh, what about evolution? What about carbon dating? What about the Big Bang Theory? What about dark matter? In fact, what about just about everything you brought up in the last 30 years? And it would never, it would never, ever stop. Science would be on the ropes for forever. So anyway, it's the shortest Illuminati meeting ever. It's like, it's like, yeah. And once, once that guy rattled off all that stuff, he'd be like, okay, we can't tell anybody until, until we figure out how to, until we figure out a way to push the narrative forward the, the way we want. And, and think about what's happened. Again, we haven't been stopped in just about any capacity. I think part of why it's getting out, why you're even talking to me now, is that it's being allowed to happen. And that would be go along with one of the plan. You know, I, I qualify conspiracies on, I, I put myself in the other, the other people's shoes, which is, would I do it any differently if I was a black hat? Black hat. Would I do it any differently? And if I wouldn't, that's like, oh, well, that's probably a good conspiracy. So think about what we have now. High-speed internet, uh, social media, and 6 billion smartphones. More, more people have smartphones than, the, than they do running water. With that, you could push forward any narrative you wanted at this stage and, and make it happen. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't even remember the original question. <laughs> I I well, so, I, Emily has a follow up, and then I have uh, a few students here who've had their hands up. So oh, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll get there. But, uh, yeah, Emily, we are your follow up. Yeah. So, just like a clarification, what would NASA and like other popular scientific figures be gaining from almost like concealing or hiding like the true shape? Of well, with NASA, it's, it's straight up money. Uh, everybody else is power. So what I mentioned before was it's once civilization, if you don't, okay, let's do the NASA thing first. NASA is just straight up money. NASA creates huge, a lot of, of, a lot of jobs and the amount of taxpayer money that's cycling through it that you can use for other programs. That's invaluable. They get 50 as of this year, I think it's about $54 million a day. That's huge. That's a lot of money being pumped in. So if you're not spending that money, a lot of it on stuff that you're supposed to be spending on and you're just giving them smoke and mirrors in production, then you can spend that money on just about anything you want. And the military would love that. I mean, remember, NASA is a military outfit. Uh, they are part of the DOD. They are uniquely military, as a matter of fact. They're, they're built on the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine. Their, their technology is built on ICBM technology. So... But as far as the other people, the, the, we'll say aside. So NASA, it's just straight up money. They, but they are very, very useful because you have to reinforce it all the time. There's space, there's space, there's space. Look, look at Jupiter, look at Mars, look at Pluto, look at all these things. Everything is the same subtext, which is you're looking at Jupiter. You don't even care if you read the headlines of the article. All it is like, you're a, there's Jupiter because you're on a globe. Uh, Mars, globe. Pluto, globe. Here's a probe out there, globe. Comet, every, you know. How many, how many stories do we have to see every freaking year? And we're so hyper aware of it now. It's like, oh, an asteroid is going to come nearby the Earth. It's the size of blah, blah, blah. They release those pretty much every 90 days now. 
and almost like clockwork as just to remind you. But to your, your original thing, which is who, well, wh- the powers that be, what would they have to, to benefit from it? It's not what they have to benefit. It's what they have to lose because they didn't even figure it out entirely until almost 1960. And when you, if you found it out in 1960, you know, civilization's already built. The infrastructure's already set up. Everything's the way you want it. It's like, yeah, everything's great. Let's just keep doing this. And then you find out it's like the even if there's a five percent chance that the population would rebel against it, because once you told them, governments as institutions would lose credibility instantly. You can't be the greatest power if you're not the greatest power. Meaning, if you're you know go- governments, the ultimate authority. But if the government admits, yeah, by the way, we're in a really big building built by somebody way bigger than us, you immediately they be, become smaller. And they, people won't listen to them as much and say, look, psychological studies have proven this over the years. So it's like, okay. So they just, they just keep it a secret. Again, they didn't make the secret. They're just keeping it. How's that? Okay. Uh, Michaela, you're next. Hi. Um, so I guess my question is uh, in the same way that it seems like you are, you know, critiquing media and analyzing like the, um, what's being handed to us and sort of like asking questions about that. And that's sort of how you followed along with this. Um, Us as like sociologists, we do a lot of the same like critiquing of media and we look at things and say like, is this really, what's true or is there something underlying right. um and so a lot of sociologists the goal sort of behind that is like where do we see these issues and inequalities and um you know structural oppression and like that's for a lot of people is sort of like a driving goal like a a greater principle right Um, is there sort of like a, I know you said like the money and like being able to redistribute that, but is there a similar like driving passion, driving principle to the flat earth movement? Or is it more, um, is it more about just like proving science to be wrong or what, you know, the, Uh no, I, I got you. Let me answer the, the back part first. One, I do not hate science in the slightest. Uh, I, we're talking on the fruits of science. Uh, I've, I've been a big, I grew up a, a sci-fi fan. I was a big tech nerd. I played video games for a living and taught proprietary software for 20 years. I, mean, I, I love science. I, I think it was, it's the greatest thing ever. As far as why we do it, uh, who, how, many, how many quotes can I use? Uh, people are suckers for the truth. That's, that's the first one. And people love a mystery, love a mystery. And, and all you have to do is peel back just a little bit of that wallpaper to show what's underneath the other side. And people get, people get sucked in. Uh, everyone loves uh, a cool, especially if it's cool. It's not too dark and sinister, which is why we have way more women in our group than the other conspiracies. Most conspiracies, you want to know the reason why flat earth is different from other conspiracies and i, I won't get into them for, for for your class sake i mean but we all know them there's all sorts of conspiracies out there and they're dark and sinister and people are wearing black hats and twirling handlebar mustaches and they and they talk in dark rooms with cigarettes flat earth is not that the difference between us and them is every other conspiracy with the, really with the exception of this one is man-made you know we cre- men created those other conspiracies whereas this one has got a, a real message to it, which is you're not an accident. You know, you were, or at the very least, you know, if you, again, if you don't want to follow any particular religion, it was built by someone and it was built specifically for you to be in it. And that, and the universe isn't this horrible empty place and you're not this tiny rock flying through it that could be snuffed out any second. You were built in a very stable structure and you're here for a reason. So, that drives a lot of people because that gets people excited on our side. And as far as the truth, unfortunately, one of the side effects, let me follow up here. One of the side effects of what we do is once you get into flat earth, he's the only drawback of it is that you all of a sudden, because it's so big, if you can get your head around that, you can, you can absorb everything. And that's what usually happens. Once it's like, Oh yeah, flat earth, that could be a real thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, 
I'm going to revisit every conspiracy I've ever heard about because it's like, oh, if they if they could fake this, they could fake anything. And that's where it gets a little muddled because people will then start going into the dark, back into the darker stuff. And I, I try to steer them away from it. It's like, no, 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 just focus on this. You'll be fine. That other stuff is just second tier. It's second shelf. Uh, so, but, but most of the people do it for... Um, yeah, just the truth's sake. It's a, it's like, look, we found something that's that's cool, that's positive, and we think you should know about it. I mean, there's this big enthusiasm, which is why I hate the holidays, because people are notorious. Once they get into this, they go to like their first Thanksgiving and they sit down at the table. I warn people during my podcast stuff, I go, don't do it, because they forget. They forget the journey. It took you four weeks, five weeks to get here, and now you think you're going to talk to your family in an hour or two and convince them? Never goes well. We've had people threaten, you know, institutions over stuff like that. Does that sort of answer part of your question? Kind of? Is that why we do it? Um, partially, yes. Um, I think I was more so asking... I think I was, I was asking, I know you said, like, it's sort of for that, that truth finding aspect and along the lines of conspiracy theories but yeah um i think i was driving towards aside from that that truth finding and not you know and not searching and being like knowing that there is like a creation aspect of it is there anything in terms of like I guess I'm trying to just draw a parallel between, I guess, like what, again, a lot of. Oh, you, um, want, you want me to break down the demographics of like when you go to a conference, who's who's there? The, like the, the quick demographics, who you're looking at from the sociology standpoint? No, um, I think I'm just trying to ask about, uh, you know, again, like a lot of sociologists are looking for a way to, to fix and to... Um, you know, combat a lot of inequalities that are existing. Ah. And so despite the work of like, you know, making sure people know that they are created in a unique way or, um, and like also that truth finding, like, is there, is there anything else like beyond, beyond that? No, that's usually the 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 basic uh, again the two camps. There is a group that is now uh, there's a, there's a Christian side of it which are newly energized, and there's all the other religions do fall into it somewhat, but the Christians especially um, that say that oh well now my my faith in God has been restored, and the other side is just people looking for truth, and once they find it, it's so unique to them and so exciting, it's got a positive thing you know side to it that the first thing they want to do is tell people you know it's the it's like hey you know what i found out something cool and i think you should know about it too and that's really just it that's those are the two camps i mean when when i go to meetups and conferences that's what you know they they have the same reaction that i did again why i made the videos back you know back in 2015 which was once you, once it dawns on you once you flip from one side to the other Again, you can't go back. It's the matrixy type thing, the red pill, blue pill. Once you get into this, which we we have, I'm not kidding you when I say this, we have a 99% retention rate. Meaning once you're in, you're in. Because you were the one that tore down the globe in the first place. I didn't convince you. I didn't persuade you. I just gave you the idea. I let you run with it. If you tear it, once you tear it down, I think it was in the documentary, once you tear it down, how can you put it back together? We, I, there's only one guy I've even known on that's had content that tried. And I think he went crazy. He was in England. So I, I don't know what else to, to tell you. Those are the two, the two big reasons though, why we do it. Truth, truth and religion. So I have a, a question from the chat and then next uh, Lucy and Zoe have, have been waiting a little bit. So the question from the chat, um, what is on the other side of the flat earth, I guess, and either your oh. model or, or maybe, I don't know if there's some different uh, perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, and it's a good question. One is, yeah, what's on the other side? Okay, first off, if you're talking about a snow globe, if you're talking about this, right? I don't, know if, I, you probably, I don't know if you can see it. I can't see my camera, but that's fine. So if you're talking about a snow globe that's just sitting there somewhere, 
then uh, the question is, what's on the other side? What's what's under here? Well, in this case, it's a coin <laughs> because it was made by some company for me in Italy. Uh, they wanted me to endorse it. But the uh, that that's that leads into one of our plot holes, which is we don't know what's underneath it because we can't dig down very far. Meaning, the, the bigger question is when science will tell you again. This is not being me being, being anti science. Why, the, I, let me clarify this. You want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Great, I can grab a pot, some fire, a temperature thing. I can test that. You tell me what the core of the Earth looks like. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. You can't tell me what the core of the, the Earth looks like because the core of the Earth is supposedly 4,000 miles down. And we've all seen the cross sections, right? It's, uh, what is it, red and orange and yellow and white. It's like perfectly 1,000 mile bands. We never question it. This is like, but when you look at the fine print, they don't, they don't know anything. It's like, yeah, we have no idea what's down there. Why, why, why give us the cross section? It's like, well, we're extrapolating from volcanoes. And it's like, what do you mean? I go, well, the deepest hole, is it 2,000 miles? It's not a thousand. It's not a hundred. It's not even ten. It's eight miles. The Russians and the and the Germans try to get past that barrier for whew, two or three decades, in over in Europe, and just just kept hammering away. Couldn't get past it. So as far as what's down there, don't know. <laughs> if people say how 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 thick is it? It's like I don't know. Mainstream science again. If 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 mainstream can't get past eight miles, I can't claim necessarily what's what's past eight miles. I, I've got some ideas. I would love to think that there are, you know, there are some hollow earth situations down there, but there's a barrier right underneath us that we can't get past. And if the military has gotten past it, they're not telling anybody. If it was me, again, if it was just me, don't tell anybody, I would just nuke it. I would just start blowing holes with nukes as far down as I could because that just vaporizes matter. Uh, but then again, it's kind of hazardous once you get down there. Anyway, that's just a thought. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lucy. Um, what has been the most challenging thing for you um, being like the face of the flat or one of the faces of the flat earth movement? Uh, challenging. Probably coming up with ways to simplify questions. That's, that's the toughest thing to do. Uh, your average person on the street I, I've got one of one of the other guys that does a lot of interviews. His channel is uh, DITRH. His, his name is David Weiss, and he has this wonderful slideshow and video presentation that he green screens behind him. He's hitting people, and I think he's going to get seriously. He keeps going the speed he's going. He's going to give people seizures because he's hitting him with so much information. Then and people don't rem remember in our community. It's like, look, the initial clues are very very easy. There, I, I, part of the reason I, I got to resonate the way I did is because I used to teach proprietary software, uh, very complex software to blue collar workers in factories in towns in the country you would never go to on vacation. Traveled around the country and, and I would teach, it's like, a, you know, you bought an $80,000 software package. I'm going to give you like $500 worth of it because you're only going to use that much. And I had to, I'm not going to say dumb it down, but I had to only show them the stuff they would use. That's, that was one of my tricks. And so I learned over the course of so many years how to boil things down to one paragraph or a sentence or two. And that is tough to do with some things, which is why, by the way, science has had such a difficult time. And I've told them this many times. Uh, I've said, look, the reason why science won't bend down to address us is in, in fact, the Toronto University students that I talked to a couple of weeks ago, she she just gotten her PhD and she said she goes why should we have to I go well there it is I go the 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 general public again when you get out of high school especially in the United States you don't know much about much we most people don't remember anything and hell, we barely drive and now you want to you know you want to introduce things to them you know topics which is why again not picking on you guys being over like the math club is really small right and so is the chess club and the physics club they're really small com compared to the rest of the student body that's who we go after um so trying to trying to create simplified versions for the general public for some 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 things i can't do people people i've got members of my community that will shoot me ideas all the time it's like, what about this? Oh, this would be a great idea. This would be a great clue. And it's like, and I look at it and I know within two minutes, I go, yeah, I can't simplify that anymore. I go, people aren't three-dimensional thinkers. 99% uh, of the population doesn't even know uh, the curvature of the earth formula. And even if I give it to you, like the curvature of the earth formula, according to mainstream science is eight inches per mile, ready? And you're totally with me on this. I say squared. 
and then you're like wait what have what happened in algebra when i was in eighth grade what, what was that okay so it's eight inches per mile per mile so it's not like stairs it's you know because it, it slopes you're it, it, it curves off into nothingness but that even t telling people just that takes them a while to 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 understand and so that's the, the biggest challenge is trying to come up with things. So if I can avoid math entirely, I do, because I have seen, I have watched it so many times. If I bring up anything, and I, I'm not a big fan of math, uh, but I bring up something mathematical or three-dimensional spinning in your head, you know, trying to you know, do this, any sort of geometry, the, uh, the uh, people just glaze over. You can tell they, they're watching me and all of a sudden <laughs> it's like they're gone. It's like, okay, come back, come back. We're not going to talk about geometry or trigonometry or calculus or quantum mechanics. We're, we're, we're just going to talk about physical things. See the boat? See the boat? It's like, oh, yeah, the boat. It's like, okay, good. Great. Anyway, yeah, uh, that's, that's it. Yeah, this is Zoe. And then Jade, you'd be next. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask um, <clears throat> if you've met like a lot of people from around the world who believe in a flat earth, or do you think it's mainly like an American idea? Or an American movement. Oh, no, no, no. It Well, we... Hmm, I, I'm not going to... I love America. And I'd love to have America, you know, wave the flag on this one. It's like, we are the greatest. We started this. No, we didn't We didn't necessarily start this. The first videos I saw were from a guy in Germany. Uh, it was all in German. Uh, the British were very big. But yes, I've traveled to all the... I've done conferences in all the English-speaking countries that were really heavy with this. Uh, did conferences in Australia, oh, no, I did commercial in Australia, did conference in New Zealand, uh, UK, Ireland, Scotland, um, Canada. Canada's really big into it. Um, but what's in, what was interesting was, again, because Americans were so arrogant and we don't learn other languages, let's face it. We're, bi we're bi-illiterate and tri-illiterate. We don't know anything. We, um, if you plug in flat earth and change it into another language in Google, this is where it gets fun. And I, I did this a couple of years ago. You, you type in flat earth and you say, type, you know, English to Korean, right? And you type in flat earth. Uh, am I admitting him or you? Do you see him? Oh, yeah, I got it. Thanks. Okay. So the, uh, and then, then so you say flat earth into Korean. And then you plug that back into Google, you know, the, the Korean version these things come up. Now you may not understand it, but you will, you'll see that flat earth has been translated into just about every language there is. Uh, for example, uh, Estonia, for whatever reason, right away, all of Estonia was into flat earth. Don't know why. I, know I, was, in a, I was in two magazines in Estonia. I'm just like, no idea why. But that's one of those weird things. You don't know. You don't know what's going to resonate and where, but yeah, we were, we are still all over. I have met, here's the other thing, by the way, you want to go into the demographic and sociology thing, you want to interpret this, 90% of our membership is in the closet. It's the best term I have. I know it's a sexuality thing, but, but we are, we're, I mean, they're totally in the closet because they're afraid of the backlash, the repercussions from friends and family and coworkers. I have talked to so many people, hell, members of my own family. They'd be like, yeah, we're not, we're not coming out about this. I, I've talked to celebrities of just about every capacity you could think of. You know, you've seen some celebrities. Perfect, perfect example would be um, Shaquille O'Neal. He came out. It's like, yeah, flat Earth. I'm with Kyrie. Right. Ten days later, he's on Jimmy Kimmel going, yeah. So I was joking. <laughs> it's like, what happened? I can tell you what happened. Shaq makes twenty million dollars a year in endorsements. All it does it takes is one one sponsor to call up and say, "Yeah, you really got to back off that man, or you're not going to have Arizona tea anymore." And that was it. You know, he was he was he was off. Unfortunately, ten days in the world of social media is forever. Right? Ten days were the headlines. You can't take that back. It's it's those headlines are still out there even now. So yeah, where there are people, I, I can't tell how many millions of people are, are believing flat earth. There's a lot, a huge amount. Uh, and it doesn't, again, a language, again, because it, it transcends language. It's, it's a universal, I hate to use that term, but it is, it, it goes, it goes everywhere. You don't even, you know, America didn't, it's not just America. Now, of course we popularize everything and we're the ones that, that hype it up. We were the ones that did the first conferences. But they were, you know, I got, I, I got to do, before this whole lockdown thing happened, I got to do a conference in, um, open a conference in Stockholm, right? It, and it wasn't even a flat earth conference. They just had me, they brought me over. It's like, yeah, it's like, we're, we're into like progressive ideas and it's so weird. And never, I'd never been there. 
and it's like we're gonna you're gonna be on stage being interviewed by an american journalist that's what we're gonna do with the first hour it's like okay sure why not so i, I just roll with it it's like okay, whatever i just say yes to pretty much everything at this stage cool uh so i i know i said jade was next but jade informed me that titus you've had your hand up for a while sorry i could not see your hand because it's blending in with your window there so uh oh titus, right yeah his uh, yeah his yeah go ahead yeah so titus and then jade titus I just wanted to ask, I don't know if you've touched on it, but are you religious in any way? And then specifically with that, or if you're not, what do you believe the afterlife looks like? Dun, dun, dun. Wonderful question. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a born and grown Christian family. Evangelical church wasn't just a Sunday thing. Went to youth group, went to Camp Malibu up in British Columbia, did vacation Bible school, the whole nine yards. But remember, I grew up on an island. We didn't know any different. <laughs> I was very sheltered, very naive. I didn't even know there was other religions until I got to university. Seriously, I got there. It's like, wait, what is this place? <laughs> it's like, somebody get me a drink. And it was, it was great. And then uh, between that and going into tech, because tech and religion usually don't go hand in hand, you know, the, the science and religion have never really been bonded, as it were. And so when I was doing the, the software thing, I fell away for a very, very long time. And when I got into Flat Earth, it changed my whole outlook on religion. Now, did I go back to church? No. Do I have a completely different respect for spirituality? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, in fact, I can't, I can't with all good conscience condemn any of the other religions at all, even though I was raised in one. I can't because I think that they have all have pieces of the same puzzle and they've all been fighting over the really the same thing. And maybe that's by design. Who, who knows? Um, but that's yeah and but uh, let me let me throw one more thing in there which is there was a i remember there was this christian conference like two three years ago a uh, christian flat earth conference and they were saying on stage during like the q a they've never seen a recruiting tool for the church like flat earth because <clears throat> once you get into it you are you know it again it reinforces what you it, if you were 90 percent sure in a creator you're now 95%. And that 5% doesn't seem like much, but it is. I mean, there's a lot of people that, again, that, that weren't in the church that are now back into the church. I'm not one of them, <clears throat> but part of my role is to talk to everybody. I'm not, I'm not just going to stand there, you know, with a, with a cross on my hat, which a lot of people do and, and say, no, I can't. That'd be hypocritical from, from my standpoint. What was the second part of that? Yeah, it was just, what do you believe the afterlife looks oh, like? Oh, yeah, yeah, the afterlife. Um, for me, I compare it, I, I compare, I, I'm a big believer in, um, opposites, <clears throat> sorry, voice, which is there, there's gotta be a, a polar opposite to, for just about everything. And if this world is 99% conflict, meaning, and you, we've all seen this, it doesn't matter if you, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, how rich, how powerful, how talented, how beautiful you are, you always have something to complain about in this world. It's weird. You know, rich people always complain about money. Beautiful people just stare in the mirror all day. Uh, powerful people are worried about power and so on and so on. And talent, they think they're frauds, all of them. It's like one day they're, no, I have no talent. Well, if the world is 99% conflict and you can't avoid it, even if you're a monk sitting in the middle of the Himalayas and you are... Um, you're, you know, just chanting and everything's perfectly blissful, you still got to deal with mortality. So for me, the afterlife is 99% unlimited, meaning you can do just about anything you want, which ties back to the original thing I was talking about, which is that the universe is based off of novelty. It's kind of like, let me give you a quick experiment, which is imagine if you had a genie you know, well, the genie thing, rub the lamp, genie comes out, gives you three wishes, but you're smart and clever. So you say, well, I wish for a million wishes. <laughs> so he goes, fine. You're never going to make it to a million, but go ahead and try. So you start wishing for everything you can think of. And it takes a long, long time, right? You, you wish for immortality and perfect health. That's what you should wish for first kids, not money. Uh, and all this other stuff, superpowers. You're going to date every person you ever wanted to date. You're going to... <laughs> do all sorts of horrible things and you're gonna make terrible decisions, but it doesn't matter because you're immortal. 
And the problem is, is that eventually you're going to run out of ideas, which is novelty. The world, the universe runs on imagination. How's that? And so here, I'll put a little thought thing into you. So all the genie's just sitting there looking at his watch going, okay, right, how long are we going to keep this up? And eventually one day you run out of ideas and you come to him. It's like, okay, look, I've run out of things. I'm bored. You know, even the trumpets are not great. And, you know, being an angel, if you do that, that whole thing, you know, I, I do, what can I do? And he goes, well, I do have something for you. You're not going to like it, but it's voluntary. So you let me know when you want to do it. He goes, uh, there's this place, very limited, very restricted. You only live there maybe 70, 80 years, suffering all over the place. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have really terrible days. And, but when you're done, I guarantee you, when you come back here, you're going to appreciate it all over again. And it's going to be fantastic. And, and it was like, really, what's it look like? Oh, it looks like something like this. <laughs> and it's like, wow, that's interesting. It's like, what's the catch? The catch is you're not even going to remember we had this conversation. He snaps his fingers Thanos style and voila, there you are. And which is why, again, uh, you, people say, well, why can't we remember our previous life? It's like, well, because you'd bail. That's why. You know what? You can't. The, the only reason, the only thing that's keeping you here is the fear of the unknown. You don't know what's out, what's, what's out there, which is why it'll never, ever be released. You'll never see a 30-second video clip on, on YouTube of the afterlife. There you go. There's my afterlife for you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, we have time for, I think, two more questions. So I think uh, Jade and Cleobel, um, we're going to hear your questions. Um, and then I need to, to take the students away to give them a quiz. Um, oh, a quiz? <laughs> I, you know, not on, you know, not on what I'm talking about, hopefully. You don't have to take the quiz. Um, okay. I'm, I'll let you off the hook there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, we're here from Jade and Cleo Bell. I didn't know there was going to be a test. Um, I think you kind of already touched on this, but what do you think causes the seasons? Ah, no, I didn't. I didn't touch on this. Uh, and I, I don't know if I get a good model. There's a wonderful app out there. If you guys want to look, we we actually do have our own full blown app. It's called the uh, Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, which will go into that if you want. But I can, because I do a lot of audio interviews, I can break it down for you. Which is, um, so seasons. You know how a needle is on a record. Has anyone owned vinyl? You, you know what it is, right? And your parents had it or your grand, probably your grandparents. I'm so old. All right. So a needle on a record player. How when, as the, the music's playing, it goes in. It's never in the same groove twice. And it moves in and in and in and in. Imagine that, but with the sun. How's that for starters? Meaning, uh, you know, the sun takes a different track every, every single, and we've got some wonderful software on this. Uh, but uh, to be fair, I don't think the seasons are also uh, built on the sun. You know, if we're talking about some sort of artificial system here, you know, uh, then the, what controls the flow of thermal energy can be also done by uh, several other things, the systems that are already in place. Uh, the jet stream up above transfers huge amounts of air very, very quickly, hundreds of miles an hour, which also looks perfect on a flat earth map, looks terrible on a globe. Uh, the underwater conveyor system, which transfers even more energy, and that's the, the currents of the oceans, which, you know, again, looks fantastic on something like this. And the underground magma systems on top of that, which I mean, people have a hard time. It's like, well, that can't be artificial. It's like, well, you'd never leave that to chance. So between the, the sun, the jet stream, the underwater conveyor systems, and the magma systems, and that it's built, you can create seasons. You know, whoever built this place, that's that's the easiest way to do it. I, uh, because I was in software simulations, look, it's just something you build. No different than a physics engine. Uh, you make the seasons whenever you want, but it is artificial. No different than if anyone has a lizard in their in your thing, you know, in your house or whatever. You know, everything in there is artificial. The light bulb, the water, the cage. He doesn't know any different, but you do. That sort of answer, kind of? Okay. And uh, Clea Bell. Clea Bell. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, um, has it ever been a deal breaker when someone in your life or like someone you encounter do not believe that same thing as you do? Like, has it ever been a problem with you building relationships with others or, you know, how has it changed your life or if it's ever changed the way 
the interests of others. And anyone, yes, anyone that I'm close to that doesn't believe in flat Earth immediately gets locked into a basement uh, in various houses. No, I'm kidding. They're under the stairs. The um, okay, so no, it, with me it's a little different. I, I, I let me get. I'll give you a couple examples of other people. Uh, there have been. With me, I've always been sort of eccentric growing up. Again, I've had a weird childhood, so it didn't surprise a lot of people because I didn't even get into this till I was in my 40s. So by that time, it's like, seriously, the line from the movie was true. It's like, well, what Mar what's Mark into now? Um, but for other people, it has been very tough. Uh, there have been divorces, uh, and, it is, and it is almost impossible to stay in a long-term relationship with someone who isn't on board with you. Uh, I've watched it. I've watched it happen over the last six years. So you have a, a you know a partner, whoever it is. Uh, you're into it. They're not. Now, if if they're not, they're probably not into conspiracies at all. But this is like a, a, a deal breaker. You know, this person may have tolerated your conspiracies before, but once you get into flat Earth, it's a whole other level. And they're like, yeah, I got to get away from you. So that does happen. Uh, in, I mean, I've, I've heard of court cases, which I don't usually publicize, where uh, people have brought up, they'll, they'll bring it up to judges in child custody cases. Where it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, my husband or spouse, you know, they, um, they're into flat earth, you know, and, and the judge, you know, raises an eyebrow and, and he realizes once the judges always seem to defer at the end. It's like, yeah, this is a little too big for me to even get into. Let's not, we're not even going to talk about it because people like all sorts of things on the internet. For me, it hasn't been uh, that much of a of a big of a big deal. Uh, as a matter of fact, my social life <laughs> totally changed when I got into this. Uh, I, I dated. No I will say this though: I dated nothing but flat Earth women uh, from from minute one. Once they got into it, because again, I was surprised how many women would show up at the meetups anyway. So, but yes, for me, for, I can only speak for me personally. There's there's nothing I can do if you don't if you don't believe in it. We're, we're going to have a problem eventually. It's, it's no di I treat it no differently than uh, a religion in some cases. People have made the comparisons between what we, what we do and religions. You know, one person's into Judaism, the other's into Islam. There's going to be a problem, you know? So that's, yeah. How's that? <laughs> Thank you. Yep. That really, like, gives me a new perspective. Because I was like, oh, how can he, like... Um, interact with others and like create relationships because in the movie they were talking about how people do get divorced and like oh, yeah. how they struggle like meeting new people I'm like but well, wouldn't it be kind of similar to like liking something but also having like the same values as the other person like the, you can still bond over something but of course there's still like a little conflict like the, that? yeah the tough part let me throw one more thing in there the tough part is if you're not going to meetups or conferences which don't necessarily turn to singles things but part of it does you know there's a lot of drinking <laughs> and there's a lot of people talking really excited uh but because you can't tell you know there could be people right around you right now that are flat earthers you're not going to know because there's nothing, de you know, there's nothing designating any, you know, unless you're watching what they're into, usually they'll slip up with something, you know, they'll wait till some, they'll, till you talk about some sort of conspiracy, whatever it is. And they'll be like, yeah, so what do you think about conspiracies, right? And then, and then you're just waiting for them to drop it on you. Uh, but it's, yeah, the, the downside is because 90% of our, our members are in the closet, uh, we stay away from most of the problems so you don't we haven't done a lot of there hasn't been a a, a flat earth massacre because because you know some family just went at it uh but but yeah it's it can be difficult for me though it was different because i go in i'm a big believer of setting expectations which comes from my years of support tech support which is you know you set the expectations so i don't go in i never would go into a relationship you know go in six months nine months and then all of a sudden yeah by the way you're in the flat earth Never, no, no. You got to get that out of the way early. So, thank you. Yep. Well, thank you so much for your for your candor, Mark. Um, and thank you so much for just taking the time to to. Oh yeah, chat with no, us, no, no. Happy you know? to do it. I've I've done a lot of classes. I've been doing classes for twenty late twenty sixteen. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been uh, fun. Thank you, and thank you for being local. I, the last local thing I did, I think, was a um, was a high school. Some I can't remember which one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that 
you are so local and it's it's a shame that unfortunately we all have to do doing this online right now yeah, yeah that's um, right i don't know if you're familiar with camp casey on our Whidbey island like, um, what are you talking about of course i'm familiar yeah. with camp casey yeah that's an spu facility uh spu runs that yeah, SPU runs it. Yep. Oh, I'll be darned. I, I I knew that the UW was involved for a while, um, but that's great. Yeah, yeah. As, um, uh, Camp Casey, by the way, little trivia, that was where Officer and a Gentleman was filmed. Yeah, the sure. three, three movies were shot here on the island. Officer and a Gentleman, Practical Magic, and War of the Roses. <laughs> well, like, maybe sometime we can actually have you out. out oh, yeah. Ha ha happy to do it. Cool. Well, can we all just thank you, Mark? Thank Mark. Uh, for for giving his time and, and being able to talk with us, we really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. It was it was wonderful talking to you uh, again. Look into it at your own peril. And if you have any questions, I am easy to find. My all you have to do is type in Flat Earth Mark into just about anything, and you will run into me. Excellent. Thank you. Well, have a have a great day. Um, yeah, and then take care. Am I am I staying on? Will or or am um, I or am I going off to? Uh, well, uh, unless you want to take the quiz or something. Oh uh, no no yeah, no! If, I'm gone. If you can right. sign off, and I think that would end the recording too from your end. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.